So one of the, I would say one of the most important lessons I've learned about black identity mm -hmm. uh, came from a visit I made to Staten Island when I was working for Fordham University uh, as a researcher. We were doing a research study into the development of kids from, I think from the age of nine through junior high school. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, early adolescence through puberty. And I happened to visit a, a home in the Stapleton Projects, famously known for the Wu-Tang. Mm -hmm. And I get there and there's a mom who had two kids who were a part of the study, uh, but she had five kids total. So myself and my partner were interviewing a kid each. While we were interviewing the kids, the other kids would float in and out. And as I was interviewing the kid, my particular kid, I realized every so often a new kid would come in of a different ethnic identity, right? So there was a black kid who I was interviewing and my partner was interviewing a white kid. There was an Indian kid who walked in, a Puerto Rican kid who walked in at one point. And, and there was a, a, another ethnic race. I, I, don't, I don't remember distinctly what the other kid was, but there, there was at least five kids and all of them mm -hmm. were different ethnicities. Well, I came to the conclusion that the the woman who was raising these kids was a foster parent at some level or just had some unique genetic <laughs> abilities um and it it, it was a it was a an amazing moment for myself because for one I grew up understanding what it meant to live in a project Mm -hmm. I seen that firsthand, and in my experience, it was a black experience. You might have a white family. I'm from San Francisco. You might have a white family here, right? You might have Asian families, but usually they're, those families are more segregated to their own housing developments. Mm -hmm. This housing, this particular house in this housing development had every culture that you could think of. And the, the most amazing thing about that was that the ethnic distinctions did not exist other than these, these kids' appearances, right? Like, mom and her character was someone who you might classify as ghetto. I hate to use that word in a negative way because the ghetto to me is a term of endearment. Mm -hmm. um, it's a place that cultivates soul through the struggle of the black experience or whatever ethnic experience that ghetto may produce. Um, and in this particular experience, it, it did reflect a black, so-called black experience or black mm -hmm. ghetto. Um, the thing that was amazing about it was that each of these kids, though different in their appearance, were all characteristically black. Mm -hmm. And it made me really, really examine what I understood as black, being that these kids know themselves to be different, right? I'm sure they all know that they are foster kids. I'm sure that they all know that they're of different ethnicities. We live in New York City. Um, but yet they still all exhibited the same character mm -hmm. and the same style and had the same language and the same culture, right? And in that moment, it really made me understand that class is such a very, very overwhelming force in terms of how we understand ourselves, especially when it comes to identity mm -hmm. and black identity. Um, it made me really, really challenge my own experience as a black man and what I understand as black and what I understand in my own character and experience as being black. Mm -hmm. Made me realize that a lot of what I know to be black really is what I know to be poor, mm -hmm. right? And what I know and, and it, it, again, it made me travel through my mind and it, it brought me to places where I had friends. My white friend Jasper, redhead kid I went to school with when I was young. He grew up next door to my grandma and he was the blackest kid in the neighborhood, <laughs> right? Because his his mom was like, had a dysfunctional life, right? His dad wasn't in the picture, mm -hmm. right? Versus some of the other kids I grew up with, Pops might not have been a picture. He might have been in and out the house, but Grams was around, Moms was around, and our life seemed to have more structure than this white kid. He, in that sense, was the nigger, 
Uh -huh. Right. And it really made me understand that this identification that we apply to ourselves really is more of a call to our class and our class identification and what we've adopted as black people re wanting to relate to our class and made me understand that this identity that I claim for myself is not about my skin, not not really about my skin, but it's about my condition and what I understand to be black. And what I, what I call black, and I also relate this to a, a very, very important topic right now, Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. What I understand is black and have grown to understand through this experience and others is that black, though we use it as a, an identity for ourselves in terms of skin color, is really an identity in terms of status, class, and a representation of what we know as the bottom. So when I say black, I mean, black to me is all encompassing. Mm -hmm. Black to me means people of dark skin, but also the understanding that people of dark skin have been oppressed in society. And that comes and with, and with that comes a certain class distinction. Mm -hmm. And it's and when I say it's all encompassing, it means that when you describe black, you're not just describing people at this end of the spectrum you're describing people who, at every end of the spectrum, whether it's a Jewish community, or a Filipino community, or a Russian community, people who are limited to the margins, or pushed away, or locked out of opportunity, or have to fight for opportunity, and I hate to say minorities, because when we look at the numbers, we know that these individuals together don't represent a minority. They represent a majority. But that what I understand black, and, and this instance is one of the things that made me understand black, is black is a relationship with the bottom. It's not a color. Mm -hmm. It's not a race. It's not even a community of people. It's an understanding that a community of people and that a world community understands. So when I think of black, I think about a relationship and a compassion for the bottom, for the bottom. That's that's what defines black to me, because again, these kids were definitely socially, uh, characteristically something that we would call black. They spoke black, they dressed black, their mom or the caregiver was black, they lived in a black community, but only maybe one of them, two of them were black, but they all were black, right? And the, if they go out into the streets, if we didn't, if we weren't able to see their skin, if we just only heard their voice or inter interacted with them in some way that wasn't visual, they'd be black. Mm -hmm. And I think that blackness is their relationship to the bottom, their relationship with having to go to public schools and living in the projects and moms probably having a dysfunctional life and dad not being there and them being in the foster care system. Mm -hmm. That happens around the world to kids and people of all race and ethnicities. But what we know about black is that it's something that somewhat defines our experience on a global level, mm -hmm. on a global level. When you talk about Africa and the diaspora, black people, brown people are usually uh, subjected to positions of inferior, in, inferiority in a social sense. Mm -hmm. So Definitely. that's what I describe as black. It's the relationship to the bottom and a relationship to, I guess, a, not even just a relationship, but a, a, a compassion for that position. Mm -hmm. There's definitely people who are black, ethnically, racially. They have no compassion for the bottom. And I think when we be like, oh, he's whitewashed or he's this, that, or third, I think that's kind of what people are remarking on. It's not that they're not black. They're totally black. There's always been black people of every class, every class, always. Anybody tells you that that's not the case, they don't know history. And every black person was not a king. Mm -hmm. That's not real. Of course. Every black person was not a king. Class has existed in every society as it has existed here, right? There's people on the top, there's people on the bottom. But the identification or the I identity of black that we know today across the world, to me, it's not about race. It's about compassion for the bottom and the people 
and the ideas that exist there and the culture, not just the idea, but the culture that exists there. You want to ask me anything? No. That was incredible, man. Cool, cool.